Hello everyone. Recently, we spent three weeks living in Nice. One of our favorite activities was to explore the many beautiful walking trails all along the coast. Some are paved, some are rocky, some flat, some hilly, but almost all are breathtaking and fun. Here are our top five favorites from Nice all the way to Monaco. This footpath starts on Plage Mala, goes around the Cape and all along the coast until we get to the marina in Saint Antoine. This is the border to Monaco. Once you cross into Monaco, you're mostly on sidewalks, but it's still worth walking up to Old Town to enjoy the views from there. This walk took us just over an hour each way. There are a few steps early on, but once you're past Cap Mala, it's mostly flat and very well groomed. We frequently saw workers sweeping leaves off the trail, picking up trash or touching up paint on the railings. The municipality didn't seem to be lacking the funds to keep things all tidy and shiny for the wealthy citizens. French Riviera can be very glitzy ritzy and exclusive, but we actually saw something egalitarian in these coastal trails. We loved that we were able to access the sea right in front of the billionaire villas. In that regard, the Côte d'Azur is still very French. <laughs> There are plenty of picnic tables along the way too, where you can sit down and enjoy a sandwich while taking in the sun and the sea. We were stopped in our tracks by a strong but very pleasant scent of honeyed hay, fresh thyme and tobacco. Turns out it was Dolly's favorite flower. Everlasting it's called. Smells incredibly good though. Yeah, he had a perfume made out of it. Oh, really? It's incredible to see graffiti in this highly manicured area of Cap Tail with multi million dollar resorts. Just before we reached the Monaco border, we came across a very mysterious door. Where might that lead to? An underground submarine base, perhaps? Hmm. It's a camera. <laughs> Close it. It's a camera. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. Finally, we arrive in Monaco. Definitely too blingy and tacky for our taste, but we did find a nice bench to enjoy our well-earned picnic. Cap Ferraz coastline is almost entirely covered by walking trails. This stretch from Saint-Jean to Beaulieu is probably the easiest and shortest. We started at the Villa Efrussi, walked down to the coast and up to Beaulieu's beach and marina and back to Saint-Jean's marina. The whole trip took about an hour there and back. The 
path is fully paved and sits just above the waterline with magnificent views across the bay to Beaulieu and Cap d'Aille. On the tip of the bay you can see the Villa Kerilos, a bombastic villa that was built by a French archaeologist in the early 1900s to resemble an ancient Greek villa. It's a museum today and is a lesser known alternative to the Villa Efrussi de Rothschild. Legend has it that Beatrice Efrussi, the daughter of a billionaire banker, visited Villa Kerilos soon after it was built and was so enchanted by it that she decided she needed a villa on Cap Ferrat too. She bought an inhospitable parcel of land, dynamited entire boulders and hillsides away to make room for her dream villa and gardens. Definitely worth a visit too. And here we're back in Saint Jean Cap Ferrat in the marina. By now the clouds have rolled in and it soon started to rain, which is why we didn't get to sit on this funny little stone bench made to look like a whale tail. Paloma Beach, our favorite. The footpath along Cap Ferra goes along almost the entire peninsula. You can start the loop anywhere really. We started at Paloma Beach, circling around the cape past the lighthouse and came up at Passable Beach. Here the footpath ends, so we walk back to Paloma Beach on the hilly streets that are lined with gated mansions. The path itself is a combination of paved and unpaved stretches, with flat portions as well as some rocky parts, so sturdy footwear is definitely recommended. We did this loop more than once and enjoyed the variety of it on sunny as well as stormy days. That's me imitating the funny stick man we saw on some of the road signs. Here's a normal stick man. Here's the one that looks like he's in a hurry to get to the bathrooms. Or the defibrillator. Head up and chest out and march. Allez vite! This trail takes you from the Villefranche Marina to the World War II bunker at the eastern end of Cap de Nice. The trail doesn't go all the way through to Nice, however, it stops here. This is another beautiful trail that runs right along the water's edge, but it's probably the most challenging of the five. There are many stairs up and down and some pretty significant elevation changes. It's a short hike, maybe an hour round trip, but it packs a punch. So again, sturdy footwear is recommended. When you get to the bunker, you can see that the trail stops at this point, but you can also see that it restarts about 400 meters further west. However, to get to it, you have to walk up the stairs to the main road, walk past the Palais Metterlink, and then go back down to the beach again. How windy is it?
final section goes from Port Limpia near Parc Vigier to the end of the trail just below Palais Metterlink. We went on this trail quite frequently as we live very close by. Our house was in the area just above the park and we'd walk down through this wonderful gated community with grand old villas and apartment buildings to get to the shore. We had a few lovely picnics on the rocks, right where the trail starts. The trail itself is paved, mostly flat, but with some steps up and down and maybe a hill or two. All in all, a very pleasant semi-urban walk along the coast below some rather precious villas on Mont Baron. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. A bientôt. Thank you.